December 1963, Cape Kennedy, Florida. On launch pad 37B, preparations are underway for the first launch of a Saturn I vehicle employing a live second stage. The second stage, designated S-4, was designed and manufactured by the Douglas Aircraft Company. The primary objective of this mission is to flight test the Saturn I vehicle, which consists of an S-1 first stage and an S-4 second stage. For the S-4 stage, the major objectives are to achieve separation from the S-1 stage, to affect in-flight ignition of liquid hydrogen-fueled engines, to achieve engine operation until fuel depletion, and to place in the desired orbit the spent S-4 stage and the payload. The design of the S-4 stage and its operational systems, while based upon proven engineering concepts, required considerable pioneering. Several unique features are incorporated in the S-4 airframe, which must support the weight of its own 100,000 pounds of cryogenic propellants, plus the weight of the instrumentation unit and payload. April 1963, Santa Monica, California. The first S-4 flight stage, designated S-4-5, completed manufacture and system checks and was ready for acceptance firing tests swathed in its protective nylon cover, in the quiet pre-dawn hours, the stage was transported to the Los Angeles Harbor, where it began the 400-mile voyage to the Sacramento test site. May 21st, after final hardware fitting, S-4-5 was installed in the test stand. The Saturn test stands had been provided with steam ejector blowdown systems to simulate engine operation in the vacuum of space. Because of an intensive testing program on the battleship tanks and with other test vehicles, loading of the cryogenic propellants was accomplished without incident. On the 12th of August, the full duration acceptance test was accomplished. During the test, all stage subsystems performed satisfactorily. The firing continued to a commanded cutoff. Residual fuel was less than one-half of one percent. All test objectives had been met, and NASA approved the test as a satisfactory acceptance firing. Following post-flight checkout, S-4-5 was taken to nearby Mather Air Force Base and loaded aboard a modified transport aircraft. September 20th. The S-4-5 stage was flown to the Atlantic Missile Range. The next day, the stage was unloaded and taken to the Special Assembly Building. For the next 19 days, S-4-5 underwent a series of system tests and the final weight and balance checks. October 10th, Launch Pad 37B. The stage was hoisted into the stand and positioned atop the waiting S-1 booster. This photograph shows the 10 helium spheres which were carried on the flight to provide redundancy for the helium heater in the LOX tank pressurization system. The instrumentation unit was then positioned atop the S-4 forward interstage. This unit weighing approximately 5,000 pounds, contained the Saturn vehicle's guidance and control package. The payload compartment was a modified Jupiter nose cone ballasted to weigh approximately 18,000 pounds. These three sections, the S-4 stage, the instrumentation unit, and the payload would not be separated, but would go into orbit as a single unit, weighing a total of 19 and a half tons. 38,685 pounds. During the following weeks, the Saturn vehicle was given a comprehensive series of integrated checks. By late January 1964, all retrofitting had been accomplished on the booster stage, and the vehicle was ready for launch. Countdown was begun on January 28. The count proceeded to launch, which was accomplished on January 29 
at 11.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Operation of the booster stage was nominal. First stage burning time was as planned. The S-4 engine chill-down operation, which was begun prior to separation, was successfully accomplished. At first stage engine burnout, the S-4 Ullage rockets ignited. All enabling events were accomplished, and a successful separation was achieved. After separation, ignition of all six S-4 engines occurred as planned. Thrust levels were estimated to be nominal. Ignition and operation of the helium heater was satisfactory throughout the flight. The spent ullage rockets were jettisoned as planned. Step pressurization of the liquid hydrogen tank was accomplished. During the flight, operation of the S-4 telemetry system was satisfactory. Propellants were depleted as planned, and engine cutoff was accomplished as planned. Propellant utilization was estimated to be close to 100%. Operation of the flight control system was satisfactory throughout the flight, and at engine cutoff, the flight path was very close to nominal. The vehicle payload combination went into an orbit having an apogee of 425 nautical miles and a perigee of 142 nautical miles. The primary objective of this flight test was to return experimental information on the flight performance of the Saturn I Block II vehicle. The knowledge gained from this flight will provide added reliability and increased performance in subsequent Saturn vehicles, vehicles which are already being prepared for future Saturn flights.